Welcome brewing friends, hope you're all doing well. This is Tim at Brew Bros again, down at the brew shed, cook, about to cook up another brew. I'm here with a friend, colleague, fellow beer maestro, Ches. How you doing? All good. What you got there? Uh, Rob for goes here. Nice. Um, Ches is a fairly new home brewer. Yep, fairly new to the party. Two brews under my belt. And good brews as well. Well, I mean, I only have one of them. <laughs> and, and this isn't staged at all, but he's actually got it. The last surviving bottle. The last surviving bottle. You're going to lay that down until your, you know, your children inherit it. Yes, I believe so. Fair enough. Good shout. Um, so yeah, Ches is here to assist because we've actually got two brews underway. We're doing an extract brew and we're going to do an all grain clone as well. We're here to do uh, the Norfolk Breweries Woodford's Wherry, which is a, quite a popular beer. It's a, a classic kind of cast camera territory beer, uh, English bitter, kind of pub garden, what you'd have with a bowl of chips or something. The purpose of this video is everyone, um, lots of people on the, on, on the UK homebrewing forums and Facebook always go on about extract and the Woodford Wherry extract kit is actually produced by Woodford so it's, it's, it's supposed to be quite well respected and I wanted to actually see what it was like. But I also wanted to see how it stacks up against an all grain clone. I, my research into a recipe uh, started on some of the forums as they often do and I came across a guy called Ray who um, said he was the founder, one of the founders, co-founder of Woodford's back in the 90s and turns out it is actually true. And uh, so he's kindly put on there the, the malt bill that they use on, on, on the original Wherry recipe, which is uh, pale crystal and caramel, and also the hops they use, which is uh, Styrian Goldings, um, East Kent Goldings, and Progress. So that's what we're rolling with. Um, all the specifics of the, of the brewer down in the description below. Ches is gonna crack on with the extract, and we're gonna do the two concurrently and, uh, and see how it goes. Um, the yeast that we're using on the all grain is uh, Y yeast. We, we're going to split the batch into two. We're going to use Y yeast 1968 London ESB ale and uh, 1469, I think it's 1469, West Yorkshire ale. So we're just going to see how those two do. And then about a month's time, five weeks or so, we'll get together, road test these babies and see what happens. We'll see you shortly. Woodford's Brewery is based in Norfolk, in the heart of the Norfolk Broads. And it was founded in 1981. Wherry is their flagship amber ale, which has won the accolade Supreme Champion Beer of Britain, no less. A wherry is a type of boat used for carrying cargo or passengers on rivers and canals, notably the Norfolk Broads. Wherry is 3.8% ABV, 30 IBU, and known for a floral aroma, sweet malts, and a grapefruit hop hit. This is actually the first time I brew from Extract, and a lot of home brewers swear by this kit. They tell me it's uh, one of the best. So, Chairs is going to open the uh, Extract kit. What have we got in there? Some yeast. Yeast, good. And yeast again. Yeast and yeast again. And then good two tins. Is that all that's in there? Simple as that. There must be something else. That is, that is literally. What about instructions? No? No. What about on the back? Yes. There we go. Side. We've got our instructions. Pretty simple. Excellent. That's what we like. I'll do. Because nothing's being boiled here, sanitising when brewing from extract needs to be spot on. Many new brewers come a cropper on this and end up being put off brewing for life. It's really not rocket science though. Get a tub of sanitizer, mix it with warm water, and sanitise everything that touches your brew. Right, cheers. So what are we doing with these? Onwards with the extract. So we're. Uh, it's time to open the cans. They're going to be quite hot. I'll see it on cam, but we've got the uh, got the extract sitting in some hot water there. That's virtually boiling water. It's a shade under 100 degrees. Get the old tin opener. It's going to be gloopy. Freshly, nicely sanitised bucket. Blimey. And we're mixing this with three and a half litres of boiling water and then topping up to 23 litres with cold. Are we good? Can't tell them that's not appetising. Got salted caramel, baby. Get all that malty goodness.
just scattering it liberally on the top, like cheese on a macaroni cheese. Oh yeah, boy. It's nice and simple, just two tins, two packets. That's all she wrote. So we got our sanitized lid here. You put that on, Chez? All that remains is to put some sanitizer solution in the airlock. Take it. That'll do it. Nice. And that's it. So this is gonna go in the fermentation fridge. For the all grain brew, we're going to use the same bottled water as the extract. Uh, that's 20 liters and with no additions. We have 3.6 kilos of pale, 200 grams of crystal and 200 grams of caramel. Now to prepare the Y East Smack Pack. Take too long. Oh God, yeah. Give him a shave. Keep it at 21 degrees for the next three hours, which is what we'll do. Incidentally, this brew system is for sale at brewbroshop.co.uk, priced at 199.99. 71 degrees is our strike temp. We are going for a 60 minute mash at 67 degrees. Like that smell? Yeah. Nice, isn't it? Yeah. Multi goodness. It smells like school chocolate sponge with chocolate custard. What do you think? Yeah. I need a bigger spoon. Let's have a little sip. Am I going to get real ill? No. <laughs> I've had some. It's good. I quite like it. Not sure Hetta really enjoyed that taste of pre-fermentation extract wort. We're mashing out at 77 degrees now. Just lift the basket up and get sparging. That's batch sparging, baby. We're looking for a pre-boil volume of 25 litres. We're rolling with 8 grams of both Styrian Goldings and Progress at 60 minutes followed by 10 grams of each at 30 minutes. This will give us the 30 IBUs we're looking for. At five minutes, we'll add 25 grams of East Kent Goldings and hop stand for 30 minutes, which will hopefully give our clone a pleasant floral aroma. Then it's into Demijohns via the two Amigos, the Blickman Riptide and Blickman Therminator. <laughs> what was lockdown? Yeah. Like, what was the point? What else would I have? How did this happen? Yeah. Here's pitch away. Tight. <laughs> In with the Y's London ESB and West Yorkshire Ale. Then two weeks fermenting at 20 degrees. A couple of weeks later, and it's time to rack our three beers to mini kegs, each with 18 grams of dextrose. I use my trusty siphon, which I thoroughly sanitized along with the kegs. So we're back. Uh, it is now just under two months because the 2nd of January today, we brewed on the 5th of November. Mm. Happy Ooh. New Year. Chez is in the house. Ed is in the house. Chez, what was the best beer you drank over Christmas? It would be the Clyde Water uh, Persistence Utile. Mark II. There you style. go. Very good. Quite strong. 11.5% uh, but really doesn't taste it. There you go. That's one for my, my tasting list. Anyway, so what we're going to do, we're going to taste the real wherry. I think I'm the only one of the three of us has actually ever tasted wherry uh, and seen what it's like. Uh, we're going to see how that handles and then we're going to move on to our, our three brews, the one extract and the, uh, the two grains and, and see how it goes. We're going to blind taste them just to see, see how they all stack up. It's where it all goes badly wrong for me. It's all where it goes badly wrong. Well, and El Rositas comes out again. Yeah. Um, I said earlier in the video that this is kind of camera territory, typical kind of cask in a pub. Quite malt forward. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, it's going to be, isn't it? I mean, aroma wise, it's nothing like the hot bombs we've been drinking recently, is it? Chez's nose is shagged, so he yeah, might not get much of it. <laughs> I don't, it's not particularly floral. It's, mm. It says, says floral on the bottle, but it's not. It's 
quite refreshing. It is, yeah. But get a little bit of tea in there. I don't know, that's kind yeah, of... Yeah. Do you get that at all? It's a bit of an odd one, but... It is. It is nice and refreshing. It's, fresh, it's nice, and, it? nice and light. Yeah. Yeah, it is. What is it? Three point eight ABV. Yeah, three point eight percent. So, so more of a session amber. Have a session on that, son? Can you? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. There's not a huge amount of flavour in there, is it? It's quite no, but it's it's quite nice. Again, I, you know, on a summer's day, it'd be yeah. all right, wouldn't it? Mowing the lawn. <laughs> I quite like it. It's it's, it's quite nicely balanced. Mm. It's, it's it, yeah. I, I think you know for three point eight percent. Is it to your taste? Like you said, summer day. Mm. Yep. Summer day, beer gone. Yeah, smash a few back. Yeah. Five then drive, as they say. They don't say that. And you, have you, you've noticed that there's quite a demand for this sort of style of extract kit then? A lot of people are talking about Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. This kit um, is, is one of the most popular extract mm. kits and, and, and it is, is the way into home brewing for quite mm. a lot of people. So I just, you know, we're not trying to slag off the extract kit here. We're just trying to, trying to see what it's like. We, I don't think I've ever tasted an extract beer. Mm. I don't think you have. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if you have, have you? No, not I'm aware of anyway. So that'd be interesting for a start, just to taste what extract mm -hmm. is like, and then just see how close our, our, our grain clones can get both to the extract kit and, and these, and ultimately of our three brews, kind of work out which one is our favourite. Yeah. And see if we can detect which one the extract Can't kit is. Extract kit if it has extract. that M, that sort of classic homebrew twang that everyone yeah, goes yeah. on about. Yeah, and just so you know, the, the three brews that we're, uh, that we're going to be testing, they're all in unmarked kegs, which I will show you now, as you can see. There's, there's no markings, it's just beer A, B and C, and uh, yeah, let's get stuck in. So we're just on the first, we're on beer A at the moment and enjoying it. It's, it's very, very similar to the Woodford just now. Um, just to make the point that uh, everything was equal on this test, it was the same water, same fermentation temperature, same um, duration, uh, same amount of priming sugar, everything was, was exactly the same throughout. Um, same temperature of, of a secondary fermentation. So yeah, our test conditions are pretty sound, I think. Mm. Yeah, if I, okay, so there's no forfeit, I can say what I think. I reckon that's the extract. So far, I'm fairly convinced that's the extract. And also the extract finished higher, didn't it? The, uh, the final gravity was higher. The final gravity was, yes. Yeah, it was. This yeah, it was, it was 10.09 versus 10.07 on the West Yorkshire and 10.08 mm. on the London ESB. There's a fair amount of sweetness it, in there. It, there? It's, it's sweeter than the original. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's a fair point. Could be wrong, I know. Interesting. I could try the other two. They could throw a major spanner in the works. So they? the other um, point to make here is that the, the ABV of the original is 3.8%, as we said. The extract brew came in at 4.1%, um, 1040 versus 10.09. West Yorkshire came in at 4.6%, which is a bit high, so our efficiency yeah. was obviously a bit higher than, than maybe we expected. 10.42 versus 10.07. And then the London ESB was 4.5%, so again, it was over the 3.8% uh, the original. That's 10.42 and 10.08. It is fruitier. You tried it? It's a much nicer... Yeah. It smells different. Yeah, yeah it does, doesn't it? There's a, there's a fruit there that I can't quite place. It's definitely like a berry kind of nose, isn't it? Mm. Weird. Was that in any of the yeast characteristics you looked at? Was any what? any of them? Um, any stone so fruit on the, the West Yorkshire and the yeah. Um, the stone fruit on the West Yorkshire, but also a little bit of nuttiness apparently for, for that particular strain of yeast. Ooh. <laughs> um, the London ASB was more sort of fruitier esters. Really, as opposed to you know yeah. the nuttiness, the, the yeah, but they were certainly in the Yorkshire. West it's got, Yorkshire, it's got a lovely smell that one. Mm. It's like it's a smell of raspberries, mm. isn't it? Like a raspberry smell? Do you get? Uh, I guess you don't get that, do you? Like it. Do you get that? It, I'm getting berries. I couldn't narrow it down. Yeah, it's raspberries for me. It's gonna be difficult. It is gonna be difficult. I. I do like that. I think I probably prefer A so far. I think. Really? Roma again. But they, they all look good, don't they? They do, actually. This one? Thank you. Again, completely different. Completely different. Okay, I'm getting nervous. Yeah, same here. I can't pick out the extract. I'm not so sure now. 
I've ch- I think I'm going to change my mind which one's which now. Really? Yeah. <coughs> I originally thought A. I was thinking it might be B now. What, the extract? Yeah. Because this tastes similar to A, I think. <laughs> I think they're very close, you know, to or the actual. Back, it's a theme, <laughs> so we've we've finished our tasting, and we're a little bit stressed by it. I think it's fair to say, mm. um, because they were a lot closer than we anticipated. I personally thought that the extract would be a lot easier to pick out. Same. Yeah. <laughs> so to be honest, all four beers, the fourth being the original, are all pretty close. So. The positives from that are the fact that we come up with an all grain recipe that is very, very close to mm. the extract kit and the original. Yep. We can agree on that. And that will be hitting brewbroshop.co.uk in the next 24 hours. Um, and for me, it, came, it boiled down to aroma mm. more than taste. Taste, it was so hard to pick yeah. a winner or to, to, pick, to differentiate <clears throat> them. It's, my, my decision is going to be based on aroma. How about you guys? Yeah, same. Yeah, um, more aroma than taste. Definitely, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, made it slightly easier, didn't it? The aroma, but yep. no, the tastes were different. Yeah, for me, one of them smelt and tasted more alcoholic than the the other two. Right. Yep, definitely. Um, one of them seemed quite bland. I thought. The um, thing is, they are all like session territory. Uh, it's quite diff. It is quite, you know, all around that that sort of 3.8 to 4.5 ABV. It is quite hard to think, well, differentiate. There's no standout flavours. There isn't. Although it's all, no. It is all fairly, it's a fairly casual kind of bland, not bland, but easy drinking beer. <laughs> right. Huh? You said bland. <laughs> Supreme Champion Beer of Britain, just remember that. Oh no, it's a nice beer, but there's nothing standout like the big beers that we've been drinking yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. Um, okay, so let's talk about beer A. So beer A, what do we think? Like, like in terms of aroma, that didn't give me as much as B and C. Mm. So I'm going to nail my colours to the mast. I reckon A is extract. That's what I've gone for as well. Is it? Yeah. That's what I thought when I first tasted it, but then I changed my mind. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Should we reveal what beer A is? It's just for the record. Yeah. <laughs> ben says beer A as well. <laughs> C. No! Oh no! London Cheers ESB! Stomach. London ESB! I haven't, got, I haven't got it right yet. Wow. For me, that was different to. That was the. the that, that was different That's to why it's 1968 London ESB. Yeah. In, in terms I, of aroma, it didn't give any way. Although near I, as much I haven't away. said which one I think it is. <laughs> no, okay. You're doing better than we are already, though. Okay, well, we've already been shanked. Um, oh, yeah, no, he hasn't said what, I haven't no, said what I think it is. No, say what you think it would be now. I think it's now B. That it's not. I think it's B. B. I'd say B now, yeah. It's B. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go B as well, I think. Oh, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy there. Easy there, che- coaches. I'd say C. I'd say C. Well, that's because B, B's got a really nice, like, raspberry kind of berry fruit aroma. That's the one, the C is one that smells. More of the alcohol, I can smell the... Yeah. I'm going to be concerned. Let's reveal what beer B was. I'm saying B. So what did you say? You think, you think C is the extract? C. And you guys think B. Oh, I, I think, think B, I think yeah. it's B. It is B. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get the spanking outside now with the, the beer paddle. Nailed it. Well. Yes. What's going on? Beer You've lost extract. <laughs> okay. Cool. That surprises me. Mm. <laughs> you know what really annoys me is that when I when I very first tasted it, beer B, I got that slightly metallic twang. What made you change your mind then? Because I didn't get it when I tasted it properly. Oh, okay. And that slightly outraged me. So how do we summarise on this experience then? We 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 created two very good Woodford clones, Woodford Wherry clones. Mm. Here you go. Look. So that's 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 the extract. Yeah. I think it's a compliment to it though. The recipe's down. I mean, it's yeah, so yeah. so mm-hmm. difficult to choose between yeah all three, wasn't it? I was hoping it was going to be a lot easier, but I mean, we're being as honest as we possibly can, and yeah, hopefully people will appreciate that. Yeah. To be perfectly um, honest, I thought we'd pick out the extracts a lot easier than that. I guess it says you should maybe go with your gut instinct. My gut instinct was to go with B. 
But it's a very good clone recipe, isn't it? The, very good clone recipe, yeah. It shows that the, the quality of it's pretty decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you guys love the uh, the wary extract kit and you want to move to something that's all grain but very, very similar, hmm. hit us up at brewbrosalt.co.uk. Um, yeah, so there we go. I think we've all learned something here today. I think, if anything, it's, it's a positive that you can so you can make from scratch and it is comparable, isn't it? You know, you made it from the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've not you've not skipped any steps and yeah. Putting in the hard work, I think it's worth doing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. So there we go. Thanks for watching. <laughs> so the in, in terms of the brew, uh, in terms of the uh, clone war between extract and grain, I'd say that the clone, sorry, the extract has won. Mm. Because we haven't been able to pick it out. No. And on that bombshell, we'll see you guys again soon. Take care.